Here we have another geometry word problem that's very, very typical of the GED. Okay, let's take a look. A snack food company has decided to package its new brand of cheese puffs in a cylindrical patch package. Cylindrical, shaped like a cylinder. A cylinder is kind of like a prism where it has the two matching ends, but the two matching end shapes will be circles. We'll have a circle on the bottom and a circle on the top, and then the sides will come up perpendicular at perfect right angles uh, from those two matching circles. Okay. If the total volume of the package, the total volume needs to be 1,730 cubic centimeters, and do know um, volume is the amount to fill it, so you can imagine this three-dimensional shape being filled up. That's the idea of volume. And the height of the cylinder, height, is 22 centimeters. What must the radius be? So radius goes halfway through a circle from its center to its edge. We're looking for that radius uh, of the cylinder. Okay. So once again, I hope that you're already thinking, hey, the GED formula sheet would come in handy. Absolutely. Anytime you have volume, area, perimeter, um, we have formulas for that. You don't have to have them memorized. So I bust out my GED formula sheet and I see the volume of a cylinder. Careful, don't pick up the surface area formula, the one with SA on it. Make sure you pick up the volume formula. So volume is equal to pi and that's what that little symbol is. It looks like two straight up and down lines with a little uh, curvy hat. That's called pi r squared h. Volume is equal to pi r squared h. That's our formula. And we're going to plug in what we know. The first thing we know is the volume. The volume we said was 17 uh, or 1,730 cubic centimeters. And I won't bother to put the unit cubic centimeters in. I'll just write 1730. Now, pi is actually a number. It's what's known as an irrational number, meaning that if I wrote it in its decimal form, so it's an irrational number, meaning if I wrote it in its decimal form, it would go on and on forever, literally. 3.14159, da, 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 da. I actually don't know that many digits of pi. Um, but the deal is that, you know, the further my decimals go, the smaller they get and less meaningful. And so most of the time we just call pi. We say, you know what, even though it's an irrational number that goes on and on forever, uh, 3.14, close enough. And so we'll often call pi 3.14. And again, you don't have to have that memorized. That's written right there on the formula sheet. So I'm going to call pi 3.14. Now, r it stands for radius. And if you look at my problem, it says, what must the radius of the cylinder be? Radius is the mystery. It's the thing we don't know. So in algebra, we use a letter to stand in for that mystery. So that r is going to still be r. That square is still going to be on it. But I also know my height. The height of my cylinder is 22 centimeters. And so I've plugged into my formula now. And now it's actually really easy. Now that I've plugged into my formula, I'm just going to simplify, do any forwards math, and then I'm going to start solving, which is getting the letter alone. So I see some simplifying I can do. A lot of students will miss this. Do you see this 3.14 over here and this 22? Since these three things are shoved together, 3.14, r squared, and 22, the three things are all multiplying. And I can multiply in any order I want. And so that's the very first thing I'm going to do. I am just going to multiply together that 3.14 and the 22. Since they're both multiplying on that same side, I can feel free to do that. And when I do that, I get 69.08. Now I got that from timesing this and this together, so those things are gone. But I still have this r squared. I'm going to drop it. And then on this side, I have 17 or 1,730. Now... Now that I've finished all the simplifying I can do, some students will try to square this 69.08. They see the floating 2, they want to square it. But you can't do that because exponents are really weak. This square is only working on the r. It's not working on this number out front. Its base is the r. Okay, and so what I'm going to have to do now instead is start solving. I'm going to have to work to get r alone. And do remember when you're solving, you actually work Gemma the order of operations backwards. Now, when we simplify, we go this way, when we obey the signs. 
But when we solve, when we take things away and undo math, we're going to work demo backwards. And so if there was anything adding and subtracting over here, I would move it first, but there isn't. Now, next, I should move anything multiplying or dividing. Well, I can see the 6d9.08 is shoved up against the r, so it's multiplying. So I'm going to take it away first. 69.08. And the rule of algebra is I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. Okay, let's give myself some room over here since apparently I write too big. Okay, and let's get our answer out here. On the left hand side of this equation, I have this expression here 1730 divided by 69.08. Now I'm going to do that in my GED calculator. You would have a calculator for sure if you were doing this problem on the GED. And it gives me a long, ugly decimal. Now, I'm not going to erase that long, ugly decimal from my calculator because it's super important not to round to the end of a problem. But I don't want to write down everything either. So I'll just write down 25.04 dot, dot, dot on the left-hand side of my equation. And you'll have to trust me that I'm just keeping the rest around in my calculator. Then on this side, multiplying by 69.08 and dividing by 69.08 cancel. So I'm left with R squared. Now, a lot of students just stop right here, not sure what to do, totally stuck, because they don't remember this from algebra class. But remember, whenever you're trying to get a letter alone, if you want to move something away, like here, I have an R, I want to get it alone, I got to move away a square in order to do that. You always do it by doing the opposite. So we know the opposite or inverse of addition is subtraction. The opposite of or inverse of multiplication is division. But a lot of people forget what the opposite or inverse of squaring is. The opposite or inverse of squaring is square rooting. So if I want to get rid of a square symbol, I am going to just square root that entire uh, expression there on that right hand side. Now the deal is that I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. So I'm going to have to repeat that process and square root the left hand side of the equation. Now. On the right hand side, my square and my square root are going to cancel. Square and square root are opposites, so even though they don't symbolically look like opposites, you still are going to cancel them, and I'm left with r. Now over here is the math to do. Take the square root of 25.04, and the really nice thing about a t, um, your GED calculator is that this is pretty simple to do, and this is what I'm going to have you do. In order to get the square root symbol, I'll type it, I'll put it up here how to do this in the calculator. Uh, what the first thing you're going to need to do is type the second button because the square root symbol is in green. Anytime you want something in green, you have to hit the second button. And then you're going to hit the little x squared button. Right above that x squared button is that square root symbol. So that'll get your square root symbol going on. Now, to put this whole long number in, you could type the whole thing out or you could be lazy like a mathematician and you can use the answer button because remember it's already sitting in your calculator. So I'm going to hit second because answer is in green. It's in green right above the negative key if you see that. It says answer A N S. So I'm hitting second square root, second answer to get the square root of 25.04 going on in my calculator. And now that I've talked about it a lot, let me try to do it. And I get five point something, 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 some jazz. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, now let's take a look. Um, and final step, we should see if we have any rounding directions. It says, what must be the radius of the cylinder to the nearest centimeter? The nearest whole centimeter, since it doesn't say tenth or hundredth, I'm going to assume whole centimeters. So assume that you're going to chop it right at that decimal place. Now, the number I'm about to get rid of, zero, isn't big enough to matter, and so I'm going to call that a five centimeter radius. And I am done.